Today I want to talk about what the Holiday Ready Heart Challenge might look like for me. And I think everybody's going to do it a little bit differently. Um, for someone like me, I like taking a variety of different things and putting them together in an integrated way. For somebody else, what I consider integrated might seem a little overly complicated. So what I'm trying to do is offer a variety of options and tools that you can certainly feel free to use. But if you do find any of it overwhelming or irrelevant or it just doesn't fit you, then by all means, just do whatever works for you. Uh, the goal of the whole thing is to end up with a holiday ready heart, not to follow a system or check off lists and say, oh good, I, I did what she told me to. It hasn't made a difference in my life, but I followed the plan. That's uh, That would be a real pity, okay? So I'm going to show you what I'm planning to do in the month of October in addition to blogging every day, which I'm really excited about. Um, that was a huge challenge for me in May. I'd never done anything like that before, and uh, it was kind of intimidating to write every day. And one of my big biggest regrets from May is that I didn't understand how much time it would take me uh, to blog every day. I thought, oh, 20 minutes, no problem. And actually, it took me almost an hour and a half to two hours every day. I think I'll do a better job this year, I mean, this month. But uh, the thing I didn't save time to do in May was respond to the comments. And I was actually completely floored by how many people responded. And I was kind of like scared, like, oh dear, if I respond to them, I might say something they don't like and then they won't like me anymore. So um, I'm getting over all of that. And uh, so I have scheduled time in the month of October, not just to blog and put my information or myself out there, but also to respond to the comments. Because boy, I have learned so much um, from my readers who share their heart or share ideas. And so um, several times a day, I've got time ch um, chunked out in my schedule to make sure that I can come through and respond respond and then hopefully pull some great ideas to put into the next day's blogs. So anyway, so the first thing I want to do though is just kind of read to you where I'm at right now in my morning uh, devotions. I'm slowly, ever so slowly working my way through the book of John. I keep just getting stuck in a really good way. And so I've, I've spent just this week in chapter 15 just rereading and rereading and, and getting new things out of it each time. And what I'd like to just share comes out of uh, John 15, 9 through 17. I'm not going to read everything. Feel free to look it up for yourself. But um, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. Oh, that's what I want for the holidays. That to me is what the holiday ready heart will be. In one of my warm-up blog posts, I pulled a great phrase from Proverbs 31 Ministries. A woman whose love protects and I want to be a woman whose love protects, um, who, whose love protects my family, protects, in my case, my students, since I'm a teacher, uh, those that I come in contact with. But my love can't protect. It needs to be the love that I've received uh, from God. So remain in my love. If I can remain in his love, then I will have the kind of love that protects that I can offer to others. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my father's commands and remain in his love. I told you this so that my joy may be complete in you and that your joy may be complete. So in addition to the love, joy is part of all of this. And you know, we sing joy to the world at Christmas time. But at least for me, joy has not been the predominant experience of the holidays. And if it has been for you, I'm going to ask you to please make comments on the blog and share your wisdom with those of us who really do struggle at the holidays and really kind of feel guilty about it, like somehow there's some defect in us causing us to have this less than wonderful, joyous experience. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. And then jumping down to uh, verse 17, this is my command, love each other. And at the risk of sounding overly simplistic, Christmas is supposed to be about love. And I've actually got a list of 31 issues that we're going to talk about in October that seem to be obstacles that get in the way of us really focusing on God's love, on Christ's birth, and what it means to us as Christians. So I wanted to start out with that before moving into the tools, because the tools are not meant to be gimmicks or um, replacements for God's word. I want to be real clear on that. For me, they've been things that help me. Um, access God's word more, and they are things that help me remember throughout the day 
what it is I'm trying to focus on. And in May, I was just kind of in general trying to uh, clean out my mind, have a renewed heart, stop complaining so much, stop criticizing so much, stop being so sarcastic, at least in the inappropriate times that I was using sarcasm as a way of venting as, a, as, a, as opposed to just maybe some self-deprecating humor for which I am somewhat known by those who know me well. Um, so what's the first thing I want to show you? You already have seen the bracelet. And the, the point of the bracelet, um, it, the idea came from the Complaint Free Challenge, but I'll be wearing this one, um, which says a holiday ready heart. And I'll be wearing this one so that anytime I feel myself getting into a situation or a mood where I'm going to look at this and go, is my heart ready? If, if it were Christmas, would this mood work for today? Would I be able to, in this current state of mind, would I be able to be a woman whose love protects? And if the answer is no, I'm just going to slip it off and I'm going to switch it to the other arm. Not as a way to punish myself, but just as a reminder, okay, it's time for a shift. It's time to shift the headline. If you saw my vlog about what headlines lead my life, am I going to the, towards that negative, sensational, if it bleeds, it leads headline? Or am I going to choose the positive headline, the one that's focused on love, the one that's focused on giving thanks? Because um, again, that's what the holidays need to be about. That's what they can be about if I choose to make that the focus. So the next thing um, that I keep in my purse is my Bible verse cards. And I have a hard time memorizing. I'm working at that. And this just helps me so much. I've already got the, the verse for the first day, which is um, Ephesians 1.4. Um, at the very top of the stack, and you know you can use what you can use these however you like. Whatever verses of the day of the challenge, I keep it on on top, so I can pull it out of my purse at any point in time. And sometimes I've just changed my bracelet, and I'm like, oh, I've got these negative thoughts going through my head. What am I going to do? I pull this out of my purse real quickly, and I reread the verse and try to um, continue working on memorizing it. And for me, that's helpful. It's helpful as an interrupter that'll stop the negativity, and then the memorization, the point of that is to replace the negative thought. So I might be fretting, like this morning, I got a text message from my daughter that had me worrying, and I was all set to respond to her with some kind of wisdom from mom, because that's what moms do, and I was like, I had this check in my spirit that said, don't, wait, pray first. Pray first. Go to the Word before you try to give your words. And so pulling this out and taking a look at it and just taking the pause. I think for many of us, just having a pause to think something other than these negative thoughts that are going through our minds can make such a difference. So the Bible verse cards, um, I do sell on my website. They're laminated. There's 31 of them, all colors. I tried to break the phrases up in the verses to aid with memory so that you can, um, so I can memorize, we can memorize one phrase at a time. But also if you go to the website, you'll find that there are a variety of free downloadable options, as well as a word file with all the verses so that you can make your own. So there's a lot of um, free options available to you as well. Now, if you haven't listened to my message, the person, uh, let's get personal. Uh, I don't want to glare too much here. Um, it is available as a CD. You can email me about that, but this is also available as a um, audio that can be listened to online. I didn't put it up as downloadable, but you can sit and listen to it on your computer. And it helps you understand where the whole purse theme came from, um, but it's a talk about the four basic personalities, and I use four purses as illustrations. Um, because for me, the paradigm of the personalities has just been so valuable to help me understand what my own needs are, what the needs are of the people that I care about, the people I interact with on a daily basis, how to get my own needs met, and then how to adjust my approach so that I am better at meeting the needs of my husband, my children, my students, um, that sort of thing. Even the clerk at the grocery store, it can be very helpful for me to figure out really quickly, okay, what do I think her personality is, and then find a way um, to bless her in a way that she'll receive it as a gift uh, rather than me to just do what I would normally naturally do, especially if maybe she's a, a different personality than I am. And then the journal. And uh, this one also you can buy on my website as a printed book. I love journals. I love being able to sit and write things out. And this kind of goes through some background of uh, where how I got into the personality challenge in the first place. It gives you some basic strength lists of the personalities. And then every day is, is um, basically the same. It's got the day. It's got the keyword for the day. It's got the verse. And then today I'm praying. Today I'm watching for. Today I'm appreciating. And again, the whole purpose of this is focus. 
Um, there's four steps, pause, pray, perceive, and praise. And one of the reasons that the personalities are so important to me in terms of changing my attitude and helping me complain less, criticize less, gossip less, and be less sarcastic is that when I do those things, it's because I'm focusing on the weaknesses of another person's personality. I'm not focusing on their strengths. And so with the journal or with the bracelets also is this little uh, personality gift card. And on the back, it lists the primary goal and then the strengths, uh, a few primary strengths of each personality. So literally, let me just role play a situation here. Let's say, um, I'll just use let's, my husband. So he, he does something that annoys me, okay? That's not hard. Almost anything annoys me some days. And so I catch my attitude and I'm like, uh, okay, maybe he, you know, asked me why I did something the way I did because he's, you know, that's, that's what he does. So I switch the bracelet and I'm feeling irritated because, may, you know, it, 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 it makes me feel insecure, maybe makes me feel unloved when he asks a question like that. I go to the verse, even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. Ephesians 1, 4. Well, there's so much I can pull out of this. I can remind myself I'm loved by God. I don't need to worry that my husband asked me a question about why I put the knife in which drawer I put it in. I can, I, I'm chosen in Christ. But the knife doesn't matter if I'm chosen in Christ. I'm holy and without fault. So I may feel like my husband's nitpicking me about that. No, nah, it's not a big deal. What really matters is who I am in God. What really matters is who I am in Christ. So I have this as a reminder and then... My, my negative thought has been interrupted. It's been replaced. And now I need to work on how I'm feeling about my husband. So I take a look at the gift card and I go, okay, my melancholy husband, his goal is perfection. Okay, so somehow what I did with a knife didn't meet his standards of perfection. And one of the first strengths he has is the strength of analysis, which means he wasn't really trying to pick me apart as a person. He really did come into the kitchen and go, oh, I need to analyze this knife situation so that it's it, everything works better in the kitchen, so it's more streamlined. I took it personally because that's what I do. I, I take questions like that personally. He didn't intend it personally. And so I can look at this and I can say, okay, what does he do that involves his analysis that not only does not annoy me, but that blesses me, that I'm so glad he does? And that's a very easy answer. He keeps the computers running. I mean, anytime I have a computer problem, he's my go-to man. And he will work hours at a time until they function just the way I need them to. And so when I can go through this process and it starts out with me being triggered, why is he asking me about the knife? And I start getting all attitude -y. switch the bracelet as a reminder that I want to change the headline, either, you know, from overcritical husband, that's not a good headline, all right? I go to God's word to interrupt my thinking, to replace my thinking with all sorts of wonderful uh, words of hope and promise about who I am in Christ. And then in my own mind, I switch what I'm thinking about my husband. And instead of being rah, rah, rah about how picky or whatever critical he is, I'm like, no, no, he's analytical. And, and he doesn't, he can't turn that on and off at will. It's who he is. And so I have to remind myself, he's not analyzing me. He's not criticizing me. He analyzes the entire world all the time. He actually just feels really comfortable verbalizing it around me. And so then after going through that process, I can go into my journal and I can put this now into writing. I can date it. I can pray specifically for my husband if that's what I feel like I need to do. I can decide I'm going to watch for more opportunities today to see his analysis at work. And maybe I'll, I'll even look for, okay, I'm gonna look for some of his organization at work. I'm gonna really look for his compassion. Since I was irritated, that was my own reaction, I'm now gonna look for evidence of his compassion to replace that feeling of, of irritation so that I don't end up building this image of my husband and turn him into this person that he really isn't. But the more I dwell on that negative stuff, the more in my mind he becomes that person. But if I dwell on who I know he is, the gifts that God has given him, the strengths of his personality, then that's what's going to dominate in my mind. And it's going to change how I feel. I mean, by changing my mind, I change my feelings. And then I'm going to put it in, into words. I'm going, to, I'm going to verbalize my appreciation of him. And I'll be honest, that day I might not appreciate his organization of the knife drawer. That may have to wait a few days because I'm petty like that. I just don't change that quickly. But I can say I appreciate the way that he um, got my computer uh, hard drive defragmented last week. It's been working a lot faster this week. And then I have the verse down here as a reminder.
Okay, so for those of you who for this sounds wonderful, wow, okay, the whole process, it sounds so integrated, can't wait to do it, uh, there you have it. And for those of you who are going, oh my goodness, I had no idea it was so involved, I can't do all that, then, then don't. Just any part of that, that you feel God speaking to you, that you feel the Holy Spirit moving in your life saying, you know, I think that might be something worth trying. Maybe it's just the bracelet. Maybe it's just catching yourself be aware. In May, when we did the complaint-free bracelets, I cannot tell you how many women commented or emailed and said, I didn't think I needed to do this. I just did it to prove how much I didn't need to worry about it. And within the first week, I was appalled to find out how much I complain, how much I criticize, how much I gossip, or how sarcastic I am. And so it was a it was a huge awareness. And when we're aware of things like this, then we can hand it over to the Holy Spirit and say, I'm confessing that I'm struggling in this area. Please help me. And that's a huge step. That might be the only thing that you need to do. Or maybe for you it's the Bible verse cards. Maybe it's um, asking for the downloads from me or getting them off of the website and getting out three by five cards. And, and maybe if you have children, you can all work on them together and make them with crayons or pens. Or maybe you've got great scrapbooking materials and you can use stickers and, um, or do them on Photoshop or... Um, no. Anyways, make, make them yourself is my whole point and um, make them fun and crafty. I know in May there were several women who just put them all over the house. They were in the bedroom, they were on the kitchen uh, refrigerator, they were near the door and they really felt like that made a huge difference for them. So maybe for you it's the Bible verses. Um, maybe all you need to do is give a listen to my talk on the personalities and just go through the month, day in and day out, kind of looking and observing for the people in your life and trying to figure out what are their primary needs, what are my primary needs, how can I take responsibility for my needs, how can I adjust my expectations of them. That alone could be a wonderful, wonderful way to have a holiday-ready heart. Or maybe it's a journal. Okay, and you can get this as a free download from me as well. Maybe that would be the only thing you need to do is just every day sit down with the journal and maybe every day there's one person, the person who just really gets on, on your last nerve or just gets under your skin and that's the person that you feel led um, to, to journal about. I don't know. Okay, pray about it. See where the Holy Spirit leads you. Um, it could even be something as simple as carrying the little gift card in your purse and this is also available as a free download. Okay. Um, but I'm excited. I'm getting a bunch of emails from uh, uh, ladies who are excited to get, get started with this. And to me, the important thing is being intentional now. I can't prevent whatever's going to happen in November and December, okay? Whether our car's going to break down on the way to my parents' house, or I'm going to get the wrong gift, or I'm going to burn something. You know, those things I can't prevent. But one of the things I'm trying to do is be really intentional about preparing my heart so that no matter what happens in November and December, I can be a woman whose love protects because I am abiding in the love of Christ and celebrating his birth. I hope you'll join us.